If I don't just start doing this, it's never gonna happen. Hi, I am Nikki Clements, and I used to make stuff like this. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Really, I can't see you. You're just a camera. Would you be impressed if I scribbled on this sheet of paper with nothing but a bamboo stick and an image appeared? Be a little cool, right? Well, let's, let's see what we think. I don't know what to draw though. You ready? Isn't that pretty cool? What, you think I could have just had it pre-drawn and just pretended to draw something and then have the image there? Do you really think it'd be this crappy if I was pretending? I just, I'd be like, boom! See, no. So obviously there's no real trick and if you read the title of the video, you know the trick. It's carbon paper. This thick. This, this is exactly what I just drew. What is carbon paper? It's literally a sheet of paper covered in carbon. It's basically like taking a pencil, several pencils, and spreading them out across a sheet of paper. Now, if you don't have any carbon paper, I would stop the video right now, drive to an office supply store, and buy a pack because I don't know how much longer they're gonna keep making this stuff. Seeing as one of the primary uses was in a typewriter. And I don't even know how many of you know what a typewriter is. This is the typewriter. The entire alphabet on little hammers, press the button, swing the hammer, types the letter. Fun fact, you'd actually be able to type a lot faster on your keyboard with a different arrangement if it weren't for the typewriter. See this Q-W-E-R-T-Y layout was developed to actually slow you down. Because if you type too fast on the typewriter, the keys all get jammed. Now in my little magic trick, I had the carbon printing to the back side of the paper, which normally only happens when you've messed up and you just put the carbon sheet the wrong way. Normally, you'd use it the other way. The sheet of paper, carbon side down onto another sheet of paper. And now anything you draw here will be copied to the sheet below it. I don't even know my own logo. And there we go. A carbon copy. That little CC in your email program. Carbon copy. Carbon paper. That's where it comes from. And now this doesn't just work to make two copies of a drawing. You can obviously trace something. So if we take an original, carbon paper behind it, onto a blank sheet of paper, or wood, or any surface that carbon will stick to, we can very easily and quickly and accurately transfer a design to something else. Now this one actually did draw, trace. And you do the same thing in a typewriter. You take a sheet of paper, carbon, Another sheet of paper. And that's the wrong way. Feed it in with the carbon facing you. So now it's facing away. Now anything you type, you'll get a copy of the original print and then a carbon copy. And depending on how hard you're gonna smash the keys, you could even try layering a third sheet of paper and get three copies. Is the one key still explanation point? Oh, is my one key broken? No, that's not the one key. Do I need to have a one key? I, um... I just realized there's no one key. There's a quarter, there's a one fourth and a one half key, but there's no actual one key. Maybe you use the L?
And of course I did it the wrong way, anyway. And in this case, the carbon copy is quite a bit darker since the ribbon in this machine is quite old and dried out, which is a trick all on its own. Now, maybe you don't necessarily need two copies, but if your ribbon's drying out and you have some carbon paper, you can just use that and rely on the carbon copy instead. This is also a typewriter, but it's an electric one and dusty. Still uses the hammers though. I have this one set up in my mail station and I actually use it quite frequently, mostly for just filling out checks, which coincidentally have their own form of carbon paper or carbon less paper in them. My mom actually used to let me play with their expired checkbooks. Well, that was until I took them to school and passed a whole bunch out and then I got an education into how dangerous that can be. Luckily, I don't think anyone tried to forge any checks. I think they were like literally like flying all over the playground. Wait. If I'm explaining typewriters to you, checks might be just as foreign a thing. Yeah, checks aren't that widely used anymore either. In most stores, you don't even have to fill them out, but it is pretty fun to watch the cashier squirm when you ask her for 15 over and she has to add 15 to your 12.29 purchase and it takes her so long that she forgets what she's doing. 27.29, by the way. Never spend a single day in retail. Now, if you really don't know what a check is, this is a check, basically, I don't have any money, but if you contact these people, I'm sure they'll vouch for me. I gave all my money to them, and they gave me these. That's a Jerry Seinfeld joke. But when you fill one out, you can see that it transfers what you've written to a second sheet. So you have a copy. But the good thing is, you can get a pack of 100 for just a few bucks, and this is the only pack you'll ever need. 100 sheets of carbon paper will last forever. One sheet of carbon paper can last almost infinitely. So when you have a design that you need to put on a piece of wood, what's the go-to method to do that? The paper template. Just print it out, hit it with some spray adhesive or a glue stick, stick it down to your wood surface, and away you go. It's pretty great, right? Yeah, it's okay. You know, if you like your template coming off halfway through cutting, or not coming off at all once you're done cutting. Now sometimes that doesn't really matter, especially for a shop project, like a push stick designed by iBuildIt. This is a pretty good candidate for the paper template. Now while it would be pretty easy to trace this out and transfer it using a sheet of carbon paper, there are a couple straight lines that would make it a little bit more challenging. And it doesn't really matter if the template comes off cleanly or not. But of course there are solutions to removing the template once you're done cutting. You can try hitting it with a heat gun or taking it off with solvent. You can even go as far as covering your wood in tape and then gluing your template to the tape. However, this would be much more likely to come off during cutting. But if you're gonna cover your wood in tape, why not just print directly on the tape? But I'll save that for another video. So instead of all these extra steps, glue and tape and solvent and heat guns, in a lot of, in a lot of situations, especially for more organic, detail-oriented cutouts, like these birds or initials, a simple sheet of carbon paper can replace all of it. And taking the extra time and effort to trace out your design can often still take less time and effort than gluing and ungluing a template. So let's go ahead and just quickly trace and cut out this bird. Carbon paper side down on the wood, bird on top. Now someone with more artistic ability then I could probably just draw their shape on freehand, but I require a template. Perfect downline, directly on the wood, nothing to get in our way.
a quick pass on the belt sander and the rest of the lines, it's like they were never there. For Christmas, I attempted, successfully attempted, to make my brother a cutting board with a giraffe inlet. And the cutting board was three quarters of an inch thick or so. And so I'd cut the shape of the giraffe out and then I needed to cut it out again out of the maple. And I couldn't use my original template to make the second giraffe out of the out of oak, walnut, walnut. So I first cut the shape of the giraffe out of the actual cutting board and then I needed to make a walnut piece to fit inside it. Now I couldn't use the original template because the shape that I cut out wasn't exactly right. So I needed to trace my cutout as accurately as possible onto my piece of walnut. Now think about it now, I probably should have cut the walnut piece out and then cut the hole out to fit, but I didn't do that. So what I had was a really thick piece of wood. That's what she said. <laughs> with the shape that I needed to transfer. And I'm trying to get a pen in here, it just wasn't gonna work. So what I ended up doing was just putting my sheet of carbon paper on my transfer wood, placing my cutout on top, and then I just took a needle attached to a dowel. This isn't even a dowel, this is a poly brush, which I'm just now reading is not for shellac or lacquer. That explains why the brush was disintegrating on me. Still worked. I can just take the fine tip of the needle and trace the inside of my shape, just pressing directly down onto the carbon paper. There we go. I got a very fine, very accurate representation of the shape. I have no idea what this shape is, but it has some very intricate details and that's what I needed to demonstrate. But if you have a pencil, you can make your own carbon paper. It's basically like taking a pencil and spreading them out across a sheet of paper. And really, most carbon paper isn't even actual carbon. It's a graphite composite or some other mineral, or carbonless paper, and things like what you find in checks or triplicate forms. Now, while you could go wild and just cover an entire sheet of paper in graphite, and you would be able to use that multiple times, that would get pretty messy, and I don't think it's worth the effort. But what you can do is only cover what you need. So first, we just need to transfer a rough outline of our image to the back of the sheet. So all you have to do is go over to your wall-mounted light board, or window, and just quickly trace the outline. Then just go over to a table and scribble along the outline with your pencil. Well, we'll put down our transfer surface, flip our image over, and let's go ahead and trace it. And there we go. It's not as dark as we get with the carbon paper, but it's definitely dark enough to cut with. Oh, and a big advantage to this transfer method over carbon paper is that it'll erase. The carbon transfer, not so much.
sample it bigger than one sheet? Just tape two sheets together. Or 40. When you glue on a paper template, it's one use. You glue it on, you cut it out, and it's destroyed. But when you use it with carbon paper, it becomes a paper pattern. You can trace over it multiple times. You can also layer multiple patterns in the same space and just trace different lines when you need to apply different patterns. So it's great on saving ink and paper, especially if you have a really large pattern. Here, instead of printing two giant patterns, one for the shield and one for the bird, I could just lay both of those lines in the same space and only trace which shape I needed. For some reason, I've just always loved this stuff. Like as a kid, any piece of carbon paper I could get my hands on, I just collected it. You know, any kind of triplicate document, I just had a whole stash of it. And I just loved that you could write and it would just make a copy. That was just so cool to me. But once I started applying it to woodworking, it was a real game changer. And it doesn't even have to be wood. You know, any surface that you need a template on that carbon will stick to, this is definitely an option. So if you're not using carbon paper, Hopefully this video gave you a few ideas on why maybe you should. My sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nick D. Clements. If you're wondering, the Nick is short for Nicholas and the D stands for David. Anyway, I'm off to make something else. Carbon paper is a great way to transfer a line to something else. It's good. You should use it. Video done. Thank you.